Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room. If I can get my hands on this thing. There. Oh, yes. I'm doing the quieter, spookier gong things for a little while anyway, because the big crashes overload and scare the cats. Anyway, um, we're working on Shostakovich. Boy, are we working on Shostakovich. Oh, so much Shostakovich. So here is today's clump that we're going to be doing. And, oh, let's just get right to it. We have a lot to get through. Shostakovich, Symphony Number no. 15 and the Violin Concerto Number no. 2. Um, these are with Kirill Kondrashin, uh, 1974 and 1967. Well, with the Moscow Philharmonic. And it's sort of, this is one of those, this is Icon. The Icon label, Russian All Star Orchestra, Icon. I, I have no idea what the provenance of these things is. Mostly melodious somewhere, maybe the same as in the symphony as the Kondrashin Symphony Cycle. Um, the dates are similar, but I, you, who knows? I mean, you just don't know. One of the reasons I collected all the Shostakovich stuff is in the day is when CDs came out and the Soviet Union was falling apart and tapes were all over the place and these pirate labels were just issuing stuff wherever they could get their hands on it. And sometimes it sounded great and sometimes it sounded lousy, um, but here it was. And the reason I got this is because it was a singleton version of the second violin concerto. I mean, separately, it wasn't, everyone does the first. Oh, hi, Finster. Hello, dear. You wanna come visit? Yeah, maybe, maybe you'll come say hi. So, I mean, I got this and it was, it was, you know, Kondrashin and Oistrakh. I mean, what's not to like? And then there's this one. Here's the 10th. Here's the 10th with Kondrashin from 1973. This is um, obviously a later recording, I think, if it's the date's correct, than the one in the Kondrashin edition on Melodia. Um, so, uh, you know, like I said, I can't speak to provenance. I hope the artists are the ones that they say they are. Um, they were exciting to hear, um, but I'm not making any more claims for them because I, I, things have sorted out a little bit since then and a lot of this stuff has disappeared and I, I, just, I just don't know. I really don't know. Ah, look, the Rostropovich Shostakovich Symphony Cycle um, on Teldec, which is now Warner. Now this has some absolutely fabulous, fabulous performances and some that are a little bit less interesting. Let's not kid ourselves. The less interesting ones are all with the London Symphony Orchestra for reasons I don't understand. Rostropovich went to sleep in front of the London Symphony Orchestra and his remakes with the LSO were even worse. I don't know what it was, but the spark just wasn't there. Now I saw him do a lot of these pieces in Washington. I had a friend of mine, very close friend of mine was in the chorus when they did Bobby Yar. I, you know, I, there, there are some wonderful performances. Numbers five, uh, let's see, what else? Well, one is really good. I saw Rostropovich do that one. Um, five is terrific. Uh, four is very good. Um, eight is amazing. That was like a, a Rostropovich calling card. He took it on tour to Russia with you know the National Symphony Orchestra. He recorded it in London, a remake that was just, I couldn't believe it. The wonderful thing about his eighth is the way he plays the, with the Toccata, the third movement. Slower than usual, but perfectly mechanical. Absolutely frightening and inhuman. It's, it's just tremendous. And you know, they're very good performances. 10 is a letdown, unfortunately. Um, but 13, 14, 15 are all terrific. 14 is amazing with his wife and Mark Rochette. And there's some great stuff in here. It's a cycle worth hearing. I mean, he knew Shostakovich well, and there's authority, there's provenance. Then we've got this famous number 12, along with the execution of Stepan Razin, that fabulous cantata that's kind of a sequel to Bobby Yar to the 13th Symphony. Uh, number 12 is with the Gavantel's Orchestra under Ogan Dorian. Um, and uh, this was for like centuries, the only version of this you could get. Um, so it was on Phillips and then limited edition. Yeah, very limited. And the execution of Stepan Razin is with Herbert Kegel and, and Leipzig Radio Symphony Orchestra and Chorus, which he was the director of in the chorus. I mean, it's fabulous. Absolutely wonderful. So that's kind of like a classic um, in the Shostakovich discography. 
Then we've got symphonies uh, 13, 14, 15 with Yarvi and Gothenburg. Now, I've said before, I wish he had done these in, on Chandos and stayed with Scottish National because Gothenburg is just not as, as high-powered an ensemble. But the performances are quite good. They really are. I have no complaints about them at all. Um, the soloists in the 13th, in the 14th, pardon me, are Lyuba Karzanovskaya and, and Sergei Lifrakus, who's Lifrakus, who's excellent. And Anatoly Kocherga is the bass soloist in Bobby Yar. Uh, I mean, this music is just so gripping. And Yarvi knows how to grip. He always had a good grip. Um, and here's <laughs> the Yarvi as a single disc. And the 14th, here's the 13th. We don't need to go through that in any more detail. Oh, look, Shostakovich playing Shostakovich, a bunch of his preludes and fugues, recorded in 1952 when they were hot off the press um, for Melodia. There's let's, how many of them? One, two numbers. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12, 13, and 14. Um, so, you know, this is Shostakovich playing Shostakovich volume one on Russian Revelation. Another one of those labels that somehow snagged a bunch of Melodia tapes and just threw them out back in the day. They don't exist anymore, um, as far as I know. Oh, Metropolis and Fritz Reiner, Shostakovich V from 1953. It's just a smoker. I mean, you know, Metropolis was such a neurotic conductor and everything he did was edgy and raw. And, you know, Shostakovich was edgy and raw and they fit well. And the sixth is the Reiner Pittsburgh one that came out reissued, we talked about it a few videos ago in the, the Reiner you know, Masterworks historical reissue paper sleeve thing. I forget what the series was called. Um, so there they were. Uh, it's good to have these. This is a French Grand Repertoire Sony reissue. Because as I mentioned also a few videos ago, the cool thing about, you know, the reason I saved all these things is because they came out in different series in different countries and I was trying to collect them. and. Who knew they would all just get tossed out in big boxes, you know, years later, one hoped, but of course we couldn't know. Then we've got, let's see, film music on Chandos with Vasily Sinaisky. We've got, let's see, fragments from the Music to the Maxim trilogy, 27 minutes of those. Then The Man with a Gun, uh, Audna, A Girl Alone, which has been recorded complete since then, and King Lear. So these are all very good. This is part of a multi-disc series of film things. Um, on Chandos, which are wonderful. Then we've got The Lady and the Hooligan, the uh, Symphonic Orchestra of Russia under Mark Gorenstein. Um, let's see, this ballet was adapted by Lev Art Artovnian, who did the, who did the um, film music score arrangements, most of them, Shostakovich's film suites. Um, and it was, it was adapted by, from pieces of incidental music by Shostakovich and turned into a ballet. So this is rather cool, 52 minutes. I don't ever listen to it, but you know, because I have all the original incidental music that it came from. But yeah, it's nifty. It's kind of like Pineapple Paul or one of those ballet things, you know, adapted from other things, you know, Gaite, Gaite Parisienne, you know, Shostakovich is not particularly Gaite, but there you go. Uh, oh, this is wonderful, Denis Matsuev, with Tamirkanov and the St. Petersburg Philharmonic doing Shostakovich's first piano concerto and Tchaikovsky piano concerto number one. These are amazing performances of both works. The Shostakovich though is completely nuts. It's off the wall, insanely precise and exciting and, and it's just, wow, baby. And the Tchaikovsky is amazing. Really, he's, he was an amazing pianist, Matsuev. I wonder what he's doing now, I have no idea. But that's a great record. And last but not least, oh, this is exciting too. The 24 Preludes and Fugues with Keith Jarrett. This came out, I remember how so vividly, this came out on ECM at the same time that Hyperion released the Tatiana Nikolaeva um, complete set. You know, that she's the person that Justakovich wrote them for, and that was her second recording of all of them, because there was an earlier Melodia one. And I did a review for Fanfare, where I sat down with the score and my then piano teacher, who was you know, a friend of mine as well. He worked in Tower Records and other stuff and things like that. And we went through the entire opus work by work, analyzing each prelude and each fugue. And I wrote a review that went on and on and on where I compared each prelude and each fugue and each performance. Um, it was, 
it was really nuts, actually. Uh, and Keith Jarrett, you know, as I pointed out, was sort of, you know, better, better in the, in the preludes. And Nikolaeva, I think, was better in the fugues. Is that what I said? I think that's what I said. But, uh, you know, uh, in summary, but wow, that was an experience getting to know this. It was exciting because when these came out, no one knew these works. Nobody knew that Shostakovich had composed a, you know, Russian version of the well-tempered clavier. Um, it was an extraordinary opportunity to get to know a whole facet of his output. And this is widely acknowledged as a pianistic masterpiece, um, one of the most extraordinary creations of, you know, in the 20th century piano literature. And it was as good as unknown. It really was an exciting time to get to know and when there were still things by major composers that we just didn't know. And that's a great way to end this talk, I think, this particular thing. I, I since have cooled on these performances because there's been a lot of competition since, and I think there are people who've done quite a bit better. Keith Jarrett, as you know, is always a very cool pianist. He doesn't get the intensity, the emotion of the music terribly well. Um, most of the time, he's very, he's very laid back. But still, I mean, it was it was great to hear this. It was beautifully recorded, and you know, once in a while, I dip into it still, because there are moments where you know the music itself is structural, is very cool, and and Jarrett plays it very nicely in those cases. Anyway, there you go. It's absolutely wonderful uh, to have Shostakovich. Endless quantities of Shostakovich, and there's lots more to come. So keep on listening, and thank you for joining me. <laughs>